you're going to watch 10 adorable animals that can be deadly welcome to power smarty if you're excited to know the 10 cute animals that can hurt you you should stay until the end number one will shock you when you see a cute animal your first thought is he's so adorable i just want to hug him and hugged him some more but you shouldn't get close to them because some of these animals can really hurt you or even worse kill you so if you see a cute kangaroo he won't give you a hug what they will give you is a kick so stay away from these animals 10. slow lorries it's hard to resist the gentle eyes and cuddly demeanor of a slow lorries but if you encounter one you best try though they look like benign baby ewoks these vicious mammals are actually quite venomous and if they feel attacked they can and will mix their toxins into their saliva and fur to harm perceived predators the secretion from the brachial gland of captive slow larises is similar to the allergen in cat dander hence the secretions may merely elicit an allergic reaction not toxicosis lorry spikes cause painful swelling and the single case of human death reported in the scientific literature was believed to have resulted from anaphylactic shock slow larises of the genus nyctocebus are accepted as the only known venomous primate Slow lorry's venom was known in folklore in their host countries throughout Southeast Asia for centuries but dismissed by Western science until the 1990s. Animal dealers in Southeast Asia keep tanks of water nearby so that in case of a bite, they can submerge both their arm and the slow lorries to make the animal let go. It is thought all nine recognized species of this small-bodied nocturnal primate are venomous. They possess a dual composite venom consisting of saliva and brachial gland exudate, a malodorous fluid forming from an apocrine sweat gland on the animal's forearm. Both fluids have been demonstrated as being venomous individually and creating a more potent venom when mixed. Slow lorry's brachial gland exudate, VGE, has been shown to possess up to 142 volatile components and possesses a variant of the cat allergen protein FELD1. The VGE has several ecological functions including anti-parasitic defense and communication. Slow lorry saliva has been shown to be cytotoxic to human skin cells in laboratory experiments without the admix of VGE. The venom is administered through morphologically distinct dentition in the form of an adapted tooth comb. In the wild, envenomation occurs from the intraspecific competition, whereby two slow lorises fight for mates, food, or territory. Slow lorries inflicted wounds are a major cause of premature death in the zoo and wildlife slow lorries populations, often resulting in festering and necrotic wounds. Slow lorries envenomation in humans is rare but can result in near-fatal anaphylactic shock. A suite of additional effects of the venom has been documented including ranging from mild to permanent disfigurement and mobility loss and near death. To protect itself, the slow loris has also been observed to rub the venom on its fur. It then has the ability to chemically defend itself from a predator, making itself unpalatable and able to fend off predators with burning. If you thought number 10 was cute and able to hurt you, you should see number 1. It will shock you. 9. Wolverine. No, we're not talking about Hugh Jackman's obviously deadly wolverine. We're talking about the character's source material, an elusive weasel with an insidious unmatched ferocity. Their name derives from a German word meaning devours much an appropriate moniker, given that this creature will hunt anything and everything it comes across, humans included. Anatomically, the wolverine is a stocky and muscular animal. With short legs, broad and rounded head, small eyes, and short rounded ears, it more closely resembles a bear than it does other mustelids. Though its legs are short, its large, five-toed paws with crampon-like claws and plantigrade posture enable them to climb up and over steep cliffs, trees, and snow-covered peaks with relative ease. Wolverines are considered to be primarily scavengers. A majority of the wolverine's sustenance is derived from carrion, on which it depends almost exclusively in winter and early spring. Wolverines may find carrion themselves, feed on it after the predator, often, a pack of wolves, has finished, or simply take it from another predator. The wolverine is also a powerful and versatile predator. Prey mainly consists of small to medium-sized mammals, but the wolverine has been recorded killing prey such as adult deer that are many times larger than itself. Prey species include porcupines, squirrels, chipmunks, beavers, marmots, moles, gophers, rabbits, bulls, mice, rats, shrews, lemmings, caribou, roe deer, white-tailed deer, mule deer, sheep, goats, cattle, bison, moose, and elk. Smaller predators are occasionally preyed on, including martens, mink, foxes, Eurasian lynx, weasels, and coyote and wolf pups. Wolverines have also been known to kill Canadian lynx in the Yukon of Canada. A. Tasmanian Devil Whether they're protecting their family, feeling threatened, or fighting for food, the Tasmanian Devil has been known to go into a fit of rage, not unlike its legendary cartoon portrayal. In fact, 
The Australian marsupial got its name long ago thanks to these devil-like displays. If you ever find yourself near one, remove yourself from the situation as quickly as possible. Despite their lack of extreme speed, there have been reports that devils can run at 25 km per hour, 16 miles per hour, for 1.5 km, 0.93 miles, and it has been conjectured that, before European immigration and the introduction of livestock, vehicles, and roadkill, they would have had to chase other native animals at a reasonable pace to find food. Pemberton has reported that they can average 10 km per hour, 6.2 miles per hour, for extended periods on several nights per week and that they run for long distances before sitting still for up to half an hour, something that has been interpreted as evidence of ambush predation. Devils can dig to forage corpses, in one case digging down to eat the corpse of a buried horse that had died due to illness. They are known to eat animal cadavers by first ripping out the digestive system, which is the softest part of the anatomy, and they often reside in the resulting cavity while they are eating. 7. Leopard Given their unpredictable behaviors and impeccable hunting skills, leopards are generally considered to be more dangerous to humans than lions. In fact, according to the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, in some parts of India, leopards are responsible for more human deaths than every other large carnivore combined. Most leopards avoid people, but humans may occasionally be targeted as prey. Most healthy leopards prefer wild prey to humans but injured, sickly, or struggling cats or those with a shortage of regular prey may resort to hunting humans and become habituated to it. Although usually slightly smaller than a human, an adult leopard is much more powerful and easily capable of killing one. Two extreme cases occurred in India, the first leopard, the leopard of Rudraprayag, killed more than 125 people, the second, the Panner leopard, was believed to have killed more than 400. Both were killed by the renowned hunter and conservationist Jim Corbett. Man-eating leopards are considered bold and difficult to track and may enter human settlements for prey, more so than lions and tigers. Author and big game hunter, Kenneth Anderson, had the first-hand experience with many man-eating leopards and described them as far more threatening than tigers. 6. Panda Because panda bears are almost entirely herbivores who feed on bamboo, they require an immensely high bite force in order to crack through bamboo stems. But even though they don't desire flesh for feeding, they will attack humans, and when they do, as reported in the International Journal of Clinical and Experimental Medicine, their puncture wounds are severe and sometimes even deadly. The giant panda is a terrestrial animal and primarily spends its life roaming and feeding in the bamboo forests of the Quinling Mountains and in the hilly province of Sichuan. Giant pandas are generally solitary. Each adult has a defined territory and a female is not tolerant of other females in her range. Social encounters occur primarily during the brief breeding season in which pandas in proximity to one another will gather. After mating, the male leaves the female alone to raise the cub. Pandas were thought to fall into the crepuscular category, those who are active twice a day, at dawn and dusk, however, Jin Dong Zhang found that pandas may belong to a category all of their own, with activity peaks in the morning, afternoon, and midnight. Due to their sheer size, they can be active at any time of the day. 5. Leopard Seal People love to think of seals as cute ocean puppies, but the leopard seal is more than meets the eye. The third largest seal in the world at up to 10 feet long, these animals are notoriously aggressive, and an a-scientist or photographer who gets too close to one risks paying the ultimate price. The only natural predators of leopard seals are the killer whale and possibly the elephant seal. Its canine teeth are 2.5 centimeters, one in. It feeds on a wide variety of creatures. Young leopard seals will usually eat mostly krill, squid, and fish. Adult seals probably switch from krill to more substantial prey, including the king, a daily, rockhopper, gentoo, emperor and chinstrap penguins, and less frequently weddle, crab-eater ross, and young southern elephant seals. Leopard seals are also known to take fur seal pups. When hunting penguins, the leopard seal patrols the waters near the edges of the ice, almost completely submerged, waiting for the birds to enter the ocean. It kills the swimming bird by grabbing the feet, then shaking the penguin vigorously, and beating its body against the surface of the water repeatedly until the penguin is dead. Previous reports stating the leopard seal sinks its prey before feeding have been found to be incorrect. 4. Anteater The anteater's claws are an incredible 4 inches long, making them capable of fending off beasts like pumas and jaguars. And if a predatory beast like the puma is scared of the anteater, then it's safe to say that we humans should be too. Anteaters are mostly solitary mammals prepared to defend their 1.0 to 1.5 mi2, 2.6 to 3.9 square kilometer territories. They do not normally enter a territory of another anteater of the same gender, but males often enter the territory of associated females. 
When a territorial dispute occurs, they vocalize SWAT and can sometimes sit on or even ride the back of their opponents. Anteaters have poor sight but an excellent sense of smell and most species depend on the latter for foraging, feeding, and defense. Their hearing is thought to be good. With a body temperature fluctuating between 33 and 36 degrees Celsius, 91 and 97 degrees Fahrenheit, anteaters, like other xenarthrins, have among the lowest body temperatures of any mammal and can tolerate greater fluctuations in body temperature than most mammals. Its daily energy intake from food is only slightly greater than its energy need for daily activities, and anteaters probably coordinate their body temperature so they keep cool during periods of rest, and heat up during foraging. 3. Duck-billed platypus not only is the duck-billed platypus one of the few mammals to lay eggs, but it's also one of the few to be venomous. The males are capable of delivering a sting that feels like hundreds of hornet stings, and victims of an attack will be out of commission for weeks. While both male and female platypuses are born with ankle spurs, only the male spurs deliver venom, composed largely of defensin-like proteins, DLPs, three of which are unique to the platypus. The DLPs are produced by the immune system of the platypus. The function of defensins is to cause lysis in pathogenic bacteria and viruses, but in platypuses, they also are formed into venom for defense. Although powerful enough to kill smaller animals such as dogs, the venom is not lethal to humans, but the pain is so excruciating that the victim may be incapacitated. Edema rapidly develops around the wound and gradually spreads throughout the affected limb. Information obtained from case histories and anecdotal evidence indicate the pain develops into long-lasting hyperalgesia, a heightened sensitivity to pain, that persists for days or even months. Venom is produced in the crural glands of the male, which are kidney-shaped alveolar glands connected by a thin walled duct to a calcanea spur on each hind limb. The female platypus, in common with echidnas, has rudimentary spur buds that do not develop, dropping off before the end of their first year, and lack functional crural glands. The venom appears to have a different function from those produced by non-mammalian species, its effects are not life-threatening to humans, but nevertheless powerful enough to seriously impair the victim. Since only males produce venom and production rises during the breeding season, it may be used as an offensive weapon to assert dominance during this period. Similar spurs are found on many archaic mammal groups, indicating that this is an ancient characteristic for mammals as a whole, and not exclusive to the platypus or other monotremes. 2. Kangaroo Though kangaroos don't tend to attack humans directly, they do have a penchant for harming dogs, which often leads to altercations between kangaroos and dog owners. For instance, recall the viral video of a man punching a kangaroo in the face to save his dog. Fighting has been described in all species of kangaroos. Fights between kangaroos can be brief or long and ritualized. In highly competitive situations, such as males fighting for access to estrus females or at limited drinking spots, the fights are brief. Both genders will fight for drinking spots, but long, ritualized fighting or boxing is largely done by males. Smaller males fight more often near females in estrus, while the large males in consorts do not seem to get involved. Ritualized fights can arise suddenly when males are grazing together. However, most fights are preceded by two males scratching and grooming each other. One or both of them will adopt a high-standing posture, with one male issuing a challenge by grasping the other male's neck with its forepaw. Sometimes, a challenge will be declined. Large males often reject challenges by smaller males. During the fighting, the combatants adopt a high standing posture and paw at each other's heads, shoulders, and chests. They will also lock forearms and wrestle and push each other as well as balance on their tails to kick each other in the abdomen. 1. Dolphin Sure, dolphins are cute when you're swimming with them on vacation in Cancun, but they're not nearly as cute when you're reading about how they bludgeon their own offspring to death. If these marine mammals are capable of killing their own young, then just imagine what they could, and would, do to a human. Although dolphins generally interact well with humans, some attacks have occurred, most of them resulting in small injuries. Orcas, the largest species of dolphin, have been involved in fatal attacks on humans in captivity. The record holder of documented orca fatal attacks is a male named Tilikum, who lived at SeaWorld from 1992 until his death in 2017. Tilikum has played a role in the death of three people in three different incidents, 1991, 1999, and 2010. Tilikum's behavior sparked the production of the documentary Blackfish, which focuses on the consequences of keeping orcas in captivity. There are documented incidents in the wild, too, but none of them fatal. Fatal attacks from other species are less common, but there is a registered occurrence off the coast of Brazil in 1994 when a man died after being attacked by a bottlenose dolphin named Tiao. Tiao had suffered harassment by human visitors, including attempts to stick ice cream sticks down her blowhole. 
Non-fatal incidents occur more frequently, both in the wild and in captivity. While dolphin attacks occur far less frequently than attacks by other sea animals, such as sharks, some scientists are worried about the careless programs of human-dolphin interaction. Dr. Andrew J. Reed, a biologist at the Duke University Marine Laboratory who studies dolphin attacks, points out that dolphins are large and wild predators, so people should be more careful when they interact with them. You just saw 10 cute animals that can hurt you. Which of all of these animals you think is the cutest animal that can hurt you? Let me know down in the comments. Remember to leave a like and subscribe or this cat will scratch you.